particularly in my own research, I went into it thinking I got this, you know, because I work with students a lot and I, I love to read. I spend a lot of time reading, so I thought, no problem, I got it. And I was completely overwhelmed by the amount of reading that I had to do um, as I was beginning. And I eventually kind of came to the strategy that I needed to figure out what I didn't have to read <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of trying to figure out how to get through it all. It was much um, recognizing that my time was precious and being really brutal about what I could read and what I'd have to leave aside, even if it looked really interesting. But that often meant having to develop that understanding of the field so you could know what you needed to spend time with and what you could leave behind. Mm. I think that today's students are more complex and more time pressured than ever before and particularly in postgraduate the students that we encounter have come with a very strong focus but are often actually working, caring, have a number of responsibilities at the same time. So the, the precious time that perhaps other students or some undergrads might have for, for um, devoting that time to reading is simply not there. So I, I mm. can relate to that from the student's uh, experience of trying to contain and having to be discerning about what and how they use reading time. Yeah, I think step one is getting students to read uh, <laughs> and how do we actually do that and then looking at the, the copious amounts of reading that, that students are expected to do and being re realistic, as you say, being quite ruthless about what are the, you know, where can we um, look at some time efficiencies around that.